All right, so welcome everyone to the um, introduction to Kamsky's uh, London system. And before we go into this, uh, there is a short um, story how I got into there. It was about uh, 1986. I was very young, 12 years old, I guess, maybe less. And um, actually, there was a private match that was played uh, between me and some players that uh, my father had invited to our home. And I kept uh, getting worse positions with white. It was also around this era that I played uh, the simultaneous exhibition as one of the uh, uh, you know players, multiple players uh, gathered against Andrei Sokolov and he happened to play ready system for me against me. And I happened to be among uh, I think one or two players who were able to win the games against the Grandmaster who was at the time considered to be the strongest candidate for the world championship. Um, and in that um, game, I used the reversed uh, sort of London, uh, which is basically knight f6, d5, c6, bishop f5 plan. And I considered the such positions to be good for black. And um, so, so returning back to that uh, match that was played at home, um, my father asked me, like, if I, why I keep getting such bad positions with white, because obviously I don't study theory, but what kind of positions that I like with black then, because... Um, if I can play something like that, uh, that I play with black well and can pl make it work with white, since it's going to be a reverse color position, right? So I thought about it and then I said that, okay, so maybe the system I played against Tretti, against Sokolov, was pretty good and um, it will be possible to play something like this with white. And um, of course, I had absolutely no knowledge of what, what, what the system was. I was basically uh, still a beginner and... Um, you know, no access to the databases, no access to the games uh, that were played in the world before that. I had no clue what it was Tora attack, which of course was um, the system against G6 that were used by famous Tora. Um, well, looking back at uh, some of the games that were played in that time period before 1986, uh, Bishop f4 actually had been played, of course, and um, obviously it was first time played in the London tournament. Um, I think in the 18th uh, uh, hundreds, and um, uh, that's uh, how the name of uh, such development for white came to be. Um, just a general name, um, you know, because of the tournament that happened to be in London. Um, no spe not, nothing specific except the Torah attack, which was um, played by Torah, of course. But again, that was against the Chislik system. And the London system is uh, basically huge because Black has so many ways to develop. He can play e6, he can play g6, he can play b6, he can play d6, you know. Um, and of course, he can go to play in d5, which is among the main lines. So, um, in this uh, video series, uh, we are going to cover basically uh, the London system according to my understanding of it, uh, based on a lot of my games and. Um, I'm pretty happy to see that the stuff that was played back in, 19, in 1985, 1986, Bishop F4 is extremely rare against D6. We're going to start now the introduction to London system where Black does not play D5 or G6. Instead, he plays for the Nimzovich type of positions where Black plays E6 and B6 and goes for that C5 uh, bond structure. And um, I have to say that against D6, at the 19... 86 uh, 1985 96 uh, area bishop f4 is pretty rare and uh, bishop g5 was by far a more popular move and i also played it of course um my game against hulak in the my very first game in the um, sort of free world in uh, new york's open tournament in 1989 which is featured in one of my selected games books with a lot of analysis and inside um actually featured bishop g5 but as we can see here, this is um, one of my earliest games against the Grandmasters. Um, it was in 1986, it was a Villain Open Tournament. And uh, I playing, uh, my opponent is um, Grandmaster Asaf, which was a famous uh, St. Petersburg Grandmaster, who was considered to be really one of the strongest uh, Grandmasters in St. Petersburg. And, um, um, you know, um, top, uh, a top dude, all right? So um, I actually managed to beat him somehow, and um, this game is pretty indicative of the way, of the early way I played London system, and um, 
it is actually featured uh, this uh, unusual plan which haven't I haven't seen actually in any games uh, um, like I, I checked some games again uh, with the bishop f4 e6 prior to 1986 and I haven't seen any one second and to return back to the game uh, this game featured the, the white plan to castle long side followed by the attack on the king side and this plan hasn't been uh, played before so um, it, this is actually very similar to the plan that I used to play against Hulik as well and in those early days of my London system um, you know this uh, whole idea of castling queen side going for the early aggression on the king side was very standard for me to play um, except uh, some uh, games like against um, Tony Miles, right, um, that we'll probably check later, uh, that featured his early um, going for the early break e6, e5 in the center where I was forced to stay with my king in the center going to f1. But returning back to the game against I save, this is among my earliest games, and uh, here uh, we see the Grandmaster actually employed the uh, knight h5 is actually quite unusual. Um, it is usual for black to capture this uh, bishop, but um, it was considered to be good because, you know, the um, very liquid pawn structure for black where he can uh, put the pawns on the g6, d6, knight d7, bishop b7, and also, um, you know, getting a pair of bishops was considered to be a really good idea. Uh, so that is the reason why black uh, doesn't actually hurry up and uh, capture that uh, bishop. And I finished the development, and black is actually pretty smart. Uh, this plan was, uh, bishop a6 is the standard way for black to play such positions. And this was actually the first time it was played against me. I consider this plan to be actually really good for black. Um, this is also the way Hubner played it, um, uh, the system against me a um, couple few years later in the Dortmund tournament. After which I practically stopped playing bishop g5. Uh, instead of bishop f4 though and again this plan was used many times uh, even before 1985 uh, however uh, I, I still think this is one of the most uh, probably uh, correct plans for um, the black to play this position immediately to exchange this very powerful bishop on d3 as the London system itself is basically um, played with the idea of creating superior light squared bishop uh, against the black bishop on b7 so bishop a6 was played against me uh take take queen e2 and now uh, of course we know that knight c7 is far more accurate move for black to play the idea is that uh, after the exchange on the d4 for example um if white uh, castles uh, short side black can go for the idea where he can uh, uh, capture on d4 and uh, sometimes prepare this b5 break and the idea is that uh, probably right now it's not possible because of the simple tactics but for example black takes on g3 and then hg3 followed by b5 and the idea is that white uh, black knight on c7 gets this very nice square on d5 and um, that's that is how topolov later played against me in sophia tournaments and uh, black equalizes we we see this dogfish engine analysis here um, again, black position is very solid, has no weaknesses and a very solid pawn structure, very typical to cause, but still, of course, there's a lot of play left. White can always go for knight e5 and then go for that f4, f5 break with a very uh, strategic uh, position, cause but sort of structure where white, white's knight is ideally placed on d3. So, but going back to the game, black instead played knight b8. And his idea was to return the knight to c6. In a way, he is, um, my opponent is mixing uh, the French uh, defense with some of the uh, uh, London analysis structure here. So, um, again, in my early days, I played uh, Long Castle almost uh, exclusively. Uh, unfortunately, a lot of games that uh, I've played um, in London system were lost and they're not available in the games databases, including the World Junior Championships in Innsbruck, including some... Um, uh, games in played in the Soviet Union and uh, a lot of um, games that I played at the Manhattan Chess Club the Thursday night action tournaments uh, which was run by Steve Emmett and uh, I played there for many years and a lot of London systems unfortunately I recorded only few of them into digital format and uh, that was probably 
only hundredth uh, portion of uh, the games that I recorded. I will feature them later in some of uh, my future uh, lectures and you'll get access to them because no database in the world has them except me. I'm very fortunate to actually record them and I'm very sad that I didn't record more. So, um, my opponent uh, plays g6 and um, that's a little bit strange move. Of course, black uh, wants to protect the knight on h5 to prevent uh, white from playing knight e5, hitting uh, the knight on h5, but uh, he should have realized that I have cast a long side and I'm ready to storm uh, the, the king side, right? And um, the computer now suggests e4 with the idea of d5, which is a modern way of playing chess, of course, but uh, at the moment I, um, I saw this bishop a5 idea, which is another standard line in the London system, especially against the black's g4. Uh, white is ready to play g4 next move, and we see that the computer actually likes this move. So the most critical way for black to play is by playing um, d6, which was the game move. I see that the computer offers the move f5, however, after h3, white bishop gets access to the h2 square and he still is going to play g4, which will lead uh, white with a serious advantage because after g4, pawn f5 will of course be used as the target for further expansion for white pieces. So black plays d6 and now we play g4 and um, black is more or less forced to take on a5 because if he simply goes knight g7 i will capture knight played by h4 h5 and black's g6 pawn is a huge target so um the grand group the grandmaster played uh, t takes e5 i have to capture on h5 and he has to capture the pawn. of course white recaptures with the e pawn as well and we have the very sharp uh, position here which computer evaluates is better for white uh, because again the knight on b8 is not that great it would have been far better for black to have the knight on c7 where he would have access to the d5 and critical f4 square as we'll see later so knight on c6 uh, is a reasonable move first line move uh, developing uh, completing the development taking on c5 immediately is also not bad i think um, now if black just takes on c5 right now then of course we are gonna go for h4 immediate um, break and we can see here that g5 attempt to block this position probably will not work and um, there are different ideas one is like rook g1 followed by knight c4 knight e3 and black loses the pawn because uh, white has rook g4 move and black cannot protect this g5 pawn anymore so after knight g5 or rook g5 uh, white is just a pawn up with the continuing attack black has no attack on the queen side because uh, square and c4 is uh, completely under control by white forces so this is the reason why black plays queen d5 i have to capture this pawn on g6 and now um again i white could have transposed uh, h4 to this main line with the computer but i was uh, very young 12 years old i was not even a master at this point and um, i was playing against this very strong grandmaster i was afraid of queen a2 and that's why i decided to play this very safe move knight b3 um, sort of protecting the pawn on a2, getting a tempo on uh, attacking the queen and um, blocking the b-file. Of course the knight is not that uh, well placed on b3, he is uh, moving away from the action on the king side, so from the uh, strategic point of view that is not a great move and of course uh, black plays queen f5 and uh, he immediately hammers on the fact that white pawns f and h are not that great, they're not connected in the attack and uh, this pawn on f2 allows black some safe uh, squares on the f4, f5, okay? So I played h4, I have to do something. Uh, the computer suggests queen d3 transposition to the end game. I don't really agree. And uh, I think h4 was the correct way to play this position. And immediately white launched the attack. Rook d g1, uh, third line move, basically bringing the rook d to the attack. King h8 makes sense. And now I played absolutely terrible move, I played queen e3, and I remember, I realized that I'm blundering bishop d6 here, of course, right? And I was very afraid that my opponent will play bishop d6, which he didn't. And of course, knight d2 was uh, much stronger with the idea that if black now transferred the bishop to a4, then, of course, white is simply winning here. So knight d2 was a better move to admit the mistake that the knight was not really well placed there, and put the knight to c4, e3. Instead, I played queen e3, following with that attack and my opponent plays queen h5 
So, um, of course, now many years later, I see that bishop d6 is just one of the moves, and um, white does not lose, in fact, because he has this incredible rook g5, and simply with the idea of following h5, and uh, this position is actually a draw, because uh, um, despite black's extra piece, there is nothing better than a perpetual. Um, as white king cannot go to a1, white has to accept it, because uh, this King cannot go to a1 because of the weak back rank, but uh, black has nothing better as there is a mate coming. So bishop d6 was in fact um, leading to an equal position, and that's the reason why my opponent plays queen h5, but queen is really passive here, and I like the way I played this part of the game. I played knight g5, immediately locking the queen into a very passive square, creating the potential for my f4, f5 break, and disrupting huge coordination between black pieces. So, my opponent now plays c4, and he is trying to get some kind of counterplay, um, even sacrificing a pawn, um, which I took, of course. I was always a pawn grabber, I guess, born pawn grabber. Rook d5, centralization, and now still it is very difficult for me to remove black queen from h5. One of the ideas is somehow would be to put the knight on c4 to the f4 square. Um, and I played queen e4, centralizing move, not bad. Knight e3, this is also not bad. However, knight on e3, the idea of knight e3 was uh, also to prepare f4, f5, and get rid of this um, and take control over d5, f5 squares, preventing black from um, uh, using those outposts for his pieces. However, after rook c5, I played a very inaccurate move, uh, queen f4. Instead, king b1, preparing, running with the king away uh, to the queen side, preparing that, uh, um, preparing the f4 or knight g4 would have been preferable. Knight g4 is preferable because um, uh, that knight will deny black's queen h5 ability to go to the e2 square and enter the game. So instead, I played queen f4, and uh, I remember this point my opponent was in a serious time trouble so he played uh, knight e5 very fast even though queen e2 followed by knight e5 is practically winning for black instead i had to play here something like rook d1 and um, black now has huge uh, huge uh, possibility here so either rook c5 back and um, if h5 for example then bishop takes g5 right so there is a small trick so it's based on rook d2, knight f5, but then black just can go either to h5. And again, uh, he got rid of my very important defending pawn on c3. My king is also wide open, and this position is extremely complicated. Um, the computer shows some advantage to white, but it is very complicated with chances for both sides. Instead, my opponent played knight e5 immediately, and of course I protect the square and queen e2, queen e4. You know, taking, centralizing the queen and setting up the trap because my opponent was down two minutes. He took the pawn, but then um, he played this absolutely horrible move knight d3. And uh, he blunders knight f5, after which he resigns the game. Of course, black would have played here queen b5. And it seems very likely that black is now even better because um, all his pieces are in the game and rook is going to the attacking side. But um, as the way it was, uh, black just simply made a blunder. So this uh, win was actually huge for me. And again, um, the point from this game is the, to, uh, for me, it was that sometimes I can go and play this wild uh, idea with the castling long side and going for the attack on the king side, even against the strong players like a grandmaster. So it gave, this gave, game gave me a, quite a big uh, boost of confidence. And... Um, uh, and believe that I can play the system and in fact this system was made for me. So um, in the next video we'll continue our um, series. We intro again the introduction this is going to be a huge uh, amount of videos on this uh, because uh, I have played a lot of games over the three decades I think now maybe four decades of uh, okay three decades of playing uh, London system with white uh, since I was 12 now I'm 45 and um, a lot of games played, a lot of uh, different plans, and um, we'll see them all just for you guys.